CGTN, China Global Television Network. This week, to be closer to China, women, women's rights. It is said in China that women hold up half the sky, but old ways change slowly. And as women play greater roles in Chinese society, the protection of their rights and interests has also been stepping up. To assess the problems and the progress, we check in a specially vulnerable group: rural women. What are the problems of rural women's land rights? And what is the government doing to improve their protection? This week, women's rights brings us closer to China. Women's rights are a worldwide problem, and rightly so. Because women have traditionally and universally been assessed and treated as inferior to men, China traditionally has been no exception. In the early days of the People's Republic of China, Mao Zedong famously proclaimed, "Women hold up half the sky." But old ways change slowly, especially in rural areas, and Chinese women have continued to struggle to achieve gender equality. But as women play greater roles in Chinese society, the protection of their rights and interests have become more prominent. To assess the problems and the progress, we check an especially vulnerable group: rural women, and we focus on one sensitive issue: land rights. Why have rural women not been treated equally with respect to their land rights? What is the government doing to improve their protection? And to reduce gender discrimination, what processes are involved? What institutions are involved? Moreover, are there resonances between women's rights in China and women's rights in other countries? Investigating women's rights in China is a surprising way to get closer to China. Thirty-nine-year-old Wang Jingzhen is a villager of the Huto village in Xintai City, Hebei Province. Her husband was born in China's coastal Zhejiang Province, and the couple had two children who had their huko registered in their mother's birthplace, the Huto village. In 2011, the village was allocated a large compensation because part of the village's land was expropriated by the government for an expressway. Based on the compensation distribution plan decided by the village's assembly, Wang and her two children were deemed not qualified to receive their share of the money. Altogether, 15,000 yuan. Feeling unfairly treated, in 2014, Wang sued the Huto Village's committee in the county court. Uh, I found the village court. I found it. Then I found the city government. I also found the city police. Then the city police told me that I should go to the police. But I didn't get any response. The city police said, "No, that's not good. We'll take you to the police court. We'll take you to the legal route." Why did the villagers' committee refuse to allocate compensation to Wang and her children? 就是他就是说，呃，那个所有就是那个出嫁闺女都不给。从我生下来就是我父母给我上在这里户口，就是我结婚就是在这里结的婚，结婚了然后我生小孩了我就户口就跟着我上在这里。Rural land acquisition in China refers to land appropriated for the public interests. This transfers collective land into state-owned land. According to the law, in turn, the country shall give reasonable compensation to the rural collective and individuals whose land is expropriated. As a villager of Huto, Wang felt unfairly treated regarding the compensation. But what did the villagers' committee think? 当然，那个那那是开干部会，那个那个党代表会，当然就是开了多长时间，那不是整地盘了，是吧？那个开时间也不短，得有三分之一嘛，那那估计是同意那个，三分之二嗯都不同意
，当时分的是头一次分块是四千，涉及到四千块钱，对这个你看对城市来说，那是个不算个少数字，是吧？对农村老百姓来说，那那那那那算是个算是个事儿啊。<笑>这个农村的干部相对不好干，嗯，农村干部你觉得有啥事重脑事，你必须得给人家通，今天档案代表通过，涉及到出来经济呀，起到一大事了，都得通过档案代表会。不给以后你就起诉，你得往法院起诉。他起诉以后出来就开档案代表会，档案代表就是一致同意，再得往上起诉，得给他倒了官司，这事儿不能改。第一次的时候就是。嗯，到县法院嗯立案了呀，立案了，然后呃开庭以后，最后给出了一份那个裁定书，就是说这个事情，嗯，不属于法院受理，然后我还是有那个上诉的机会，呃，中院那个呃开庭审理以后，呃就是直接就给出了那个呃裁定书，说那个，嗯。指令这个邢台县法院，呃，审理此案，这里开庭开了一次，直接就判了，就是判的他，呃，村委会，嗯，那个给我们钱。The compensation distribution plan was decided by the village's assembly, and the village's committee has to obey. Then how do judges who heard the trial see Wang's case? 争真正的争议焦点是王金珍和两个孩子，他们是否是村集体成员资格？呃，获得这个资格了才能获得土地补偿款。嗯，在当时的情况是法律上没有明确的规定，到底这个村集体成员资格是由政府部门来确定，还是由法院确定？没有明文规定。嗯，所以最初的时候，县法院就认为由法院管不大合适，所以驳回他起诉了。驳回起诉以后，王金珍不服就上诉到我们中院。中院当时是本这两个情况，一个是我们院里当时是这个有一个针对土地承包法有一个指导意见，还有就是本着维护妇女儿童权益的这方考虑。In China's rural regions, a member of a collective economic organization refers to a person who participates in production or lives within the collective economic organization and has rights and obligations with respect to the collective economic organization. Obtaining membership or not affects one's rights. 不管结婚没有结婚，户口一直没有迁出，而且两个孩子从出生，两孩两两孩子出生以后就把户口落在村里，王金山这村里还有土地，所以我们认为他就是嗯，户头村的村民，他当然得享有这个权利。的决定的分配方案就是侵害的原告的原告的权益，应该是男女平等，是吧？只只给只给只给本村的，嗯，男子都给了，但是女儿没有给，妇女这一块没有给，所以我们认为。侵犯这个方面，还有是那个妇女权益保障法，啊，就是男女男女平等，都有同等享有那个享有的权利。后来的土地承包法对于这个外嫁女有专门的规定，如果她在那边没有获得相应的这个权益，那么她的嗯、呃、以前的这个村集体成员还依然享有享有资格。嗯、呃，你不，她不能因为他们的这个村集体的一个研究决定。而这个侵犯了王金珍和两个孩子的这个基本的生活权益，所以这样的话就没有支持村委会的上诉请求。你看道歉官司以后才知道，像这种情况，你像这个，像俺家这个国家这个这个这个时候，户口在咱这儿，享受这个权益就该在这儿，也不道官司咱也不清楚这个事，毕竟咱享这个法律的支持也少。如果他站在那个，嗯、呃，他们村委会当时的角度上。嗯，可能他们从那个情理上，啊，从情理上，或者说那个老百姓，包括选举上村干部，我能代表全体，嗯，大多数或者全体老百姓的利益，嗯，既然大多数不同意给，即使我我我站在这职务上，我想给我也不能给。The Hutaw Villages Committee made its hard decision, but for Wang Jingzhen, the lawsuit was a hard won result. 我也是。嗯，请请不起律师，嗯、呃，然后我就自己，呃，很多时候都是熬到半夜，就是这个去观察、去查，呃，去了解这个法律上的嗯一些条款什么的。我我老公半夜醒了，就看着我还在那里
说：“哎呀，说你怎么还不睡啊？”我就说这个事情我还没有弄懂，呃，最终还是自自己上法庭，自己也辩护，打赢了。我当时，哎呀，我我当时收到那个嗯、呃、裁定书，说指令这个县法院让他去处理这件事情。哎呀，我心里边可高兴了，我当时激动的我，我我也是在那个呃呃拿到那份判决书的时候，我也是哭。在我这里发生的，我如果走不通，我的孩子怎么去走这个路？我走了那么长的路，都都没走通，但是我拿起法律来维护我自己的权益，我成功了，我活起来精神头更大一点，是吧？我感觉，呃，最起码都是光明的。How to comprehend Wang Jingjun's case? To get professional perspectives, we interviewed Ma Weidong, Director of Bureau of Enforcement at Xingtai Intermediate People's Court, Carol Boudreau, Chief Program Officer of Landisa, an international non-governmental organization based in the U.S. that fights rural poverty through securing land rights for the rural poor, and Dr. Li Yu Mai, Executive Director of Agriculture and Rural Legal System Research Center at China Agricultural University. Thanks to agriculture modernization, land value continues to surge. Land acquisition in some areas has led to an increase in compensation for collective economic organizations. Who are entitled to compensation? It involves identifying membership in rural collective organizations. Unfortunately, many women were not recognized as members, thus excluding them from the compensation distribution plan. Many parts of the world still see women as uh, less equal than men in a community. These community-level norms and practices explain in part why women's rights aren't as well protected as they should be. In China, there is a very interesting phenomenon where women are, a mem are members of households Households in rural areas are members of collectives, and the rights that you have over your land depend upon two things, your membership in a household and your membership in a collective. For women, when they leave their parents' household to go to their husband's home, or maybe if they leave to go to the city to work, um, this can, in some situations, put their rights to land at risk. Gender equality is clearly laid out in China's laws and regulations, but many issues involving land are handled at the village level, which have autonomy. Some decisions of villagers' assemblies have infringed on the land rights of women, including those who married outside their hometowns. This problem gets increasingly acute when urbanization comes into play. Before 2010, cases occurred that people submitted complaints regarding the allocation of land revenue. Asking for court decisions as both women's federations and local government authorities could not settle the disputes. Once two villages in Xingtai, one with over 40 residents and one with over 70, appealed to Hebei Provincial Party Committee, and we thought of rolling out a regulatory rule. China's Supreme People's Court stipulates that the People's Court shall accept civil disputes over compensation distribution for the requisition of contracted land, but issues no specifics on how to handle such cases. Xingtai's immediate People's Courts have drafted opinions offering guidance on handling disputes on land revenues. After that, the number of complaints on such cases dropped significantly. The influence of these opinions has helped relieve pressure on people seeking an appeal on certain decisions. The court can rule on cases, and it will have demonstrable effect. An article published on China Women's News praised the court's approach to protecting women's land revenue allocation rights as the Xingtai mode, and it proposed to further strengthen the rule of law by encouraging the National People's Congress to promulgate laws for nationwide application, because we do not have uniform standards on case acceptance, handling processes, and judgment. 
The All China Women's Federation and Hebei Women's Federation have exchanged views with me multiple times, and they are also promoting the NPC to promulgate such laws. The lawmaking process has already been initiated. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs and the Office of the Central Leading Group for Rural Affairs are spearheading draft legislation for rural collective economic organization. I do think that um, the government is is continuing to make uh, improvements where it it identifies the need to the need for some changes in language or clarifying some ambiguities in the law and uh, that addressing ambiguities related to collective membership can be very helpful. Lawmaking initiatives are ongoing, but how to surmount the barriers erected by social norms, namely village regulations and customs, is a challenge. Village regulations and agreements that is formed under the village autonomy should not go against laws and regulations. Laws including the law on the protection of women's rights and interests and the Constitution have clear regulations on women's rights protection. Therefore, when villages formulate village regulations and agreements, government authorities should enforce a review process on them. In 2018, the Ministry of Civil Affairs, Organization Department of the CPC Central Committee, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, All China Women's Federation and other groups jointly issued guidance on the supervision of village regulations and agreements. By 2020, these are expected to go through another round of reviews. The villagers didn't intend to break the law. They just lacked legal awareness. If half of the people working on farms don't have the same rights as the other half of the people who are working on farms and growing food for the country, then you're less likely, I mean, you may have challenges around productivity, you may have challenges around um, uh, ensuring that people are uh, as entrepreneurial or productive as they might be. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there to see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you. All around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN. See the difference. To women like Wang Jingzhen, when their legal rights are infringed, they resort to the law and the court. But in Weilu village of Xingtai City of Hebei province, land rights disputes can be settled out of court. In 2017, Weilu village was allocated a large compensation for the government's acquisition of the village's land to build an expressway. The village's committee decided to allocate only half the money to women who had married outside the village. And that triggered the grievance. Dan 32 unhappy households appeal to higher levels of government. 
Their complaint of being unfairly treated brought great pressure on village cadres. This is not a problem, it's not a problem. It's a problem that is very big. This is a problem. The first one is the first one. This is the first one. The first one 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 is the first one. But the first one is the first one. 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 呃，法律的依据是什么？这些个基层的干部啊，他也一直在寻求一些个解决的方案。他求助于这些个呃法律以后，给他讲明白以后，呃，一是呢，干部知道，帮助他们确立了一个行进的方向，说怎么处理这个问题一个方向。当然开始就是一家一户做了，做做把这工作做了，基本上水到渠成的时候，哎，最后同意开个全体这个会啊。这个工作啊，还是大部分晚上做。因为这个老百姓他白天都要去干活儿啊，又外出打工，又是他这个公园的干活儿，他晚上他的时间是比较充足的。就是到一家的这个这个，我都预料到他这是个难题。到那三两句话就说这个不行，他嫁出去了，这个这个这个这个这个还能能给他的啊？这第一句话问的很直截了当了啊。后来就跟谁也说吧，你说他嫁出去了，后代也出来，这国家是有法度的。应该说是男女平等的吧，是吧？闺女大这的，你有两个闺女也可以都在家呀。你就是，嗯、呃，那小啊也可以往别人家走啊，是吧？这都是，哎、呃，男女平等都都不说那啥，这国家不是已经都有这个那啥呀，是吧？就说这个男女平等啊，一直没有贯彻到位，啊，但是法律规定呢很明确，但是在村民这个小范围小范围内，他是不理解的，啊，其实是一个习俗和法律的一个。After concerted efforts by village cadres, township government, and the county court, the land rights dispute over compensation was finally and peacefully resolved. Nuli 不想办法解决了，到现在的呃局面，相亲也不一定这么和谐。Then how to understand the Weilu's village's case and its way of solving disputes? The village committee reached out to the township government and the county court to learn the regulations. The village cadres then spent their evenings visiting households, telling them what the law stipulates and explaining the harm that can arise from their old practices. During the visits, the cadres popularized law to raise the legal awareness of the villagers. I do also think um, the examples around uh, village leadership and trying to work with village leaders to to for to help them understand and be aware of the formal law is a is a very nice example. Um, whether other countries would have the same level of resources to send government officials out to meet with villagers, that can be a different question. Part of the problem around. Uh, land rights in general and women's land rights in other countries uh, is tied to the level of resources that the government has to protect these rights as compared to doing other things that the government needs to do. Litigation is quite costly. I think it is a good measure to integrate non-litigation settlements into the protection of women's land rights and interests. In some countries, as much as 70% of the cases in court are land-related cases. Can you imagine that? The, the majority, the vast majority of cases, legal cases, are about land and property. 
So if you can find if you can find peaceful ways outside of a court system to resolve these disputes, courts would even be able to, to focus on other issues. Families would be able to focus on other issues. And there would be more resources available to put into the economy to grow the economy. Women are more aware of their rights and interests. It takes courage to file complaints against villagers they know, the villagers committee, or rural collective economic organizations that play significant roles in their lives. For me, it was very interesting to see the way parents stepped forward to argue for the rights of their daughters. Um, and that's a way that you can begin making the kind of change we were talking about earlier. Having an older generation or having parents recognize that there is a good reason why the daughters in their family should be protected or should receive equal compensation. Um, is important because they can speak to their friends, they can speak to leaders, they can help convince leaders why the situation should be different from the way it was in the past. If the disputes cannot be addressed by a local village economic collective or local villagers committee, women seek solutions by complaining to a higher level of government or filing a lawsuit. I think this shows a rising awareness of women to protect their own rights. China's legal framework is actually um, quite strong. The constitution uh, provides for equal protection and there are laws that protect um, equal rights, particularly to rural lands, whether those are residential lands or agricultural lands. Uh, the rural contracting land law has been revised to become relatively strong in terms of gender equality. Um, it is stronger than the legal framework in some other parts of the world. Uh, we know today that there are still approximately 40 countries around the world that have legal provisions that allow for discrimination between women and men. Since the CPC came to power, it has made clear the promotion of women's liberation and gender equality in its guiding principles. These principles have been elevated into state will in the form of legislation. China's constitution also clearly stipulates the basic principle that men and women have equal rights. National and local laws and regulations are there to safeguard women's land rights. Gender inequality has been so entrenched in the world and so ubiquitous that it can seem normal. Impediments to gender equality worldwide remain. Geographic and cultural barriers, insufficient lawmaking efforts, economic backwardness. China has made progress, cultivating rule of law, improving judicial systems, establishing consistent and fair practices for promoting gender equality. To investigate, we picked a sore spot land rights of rural women. Institutionally, People's Congresses are passing new laws. For example, in 2018, the revised law on contracting rural land stipulates that each household member has equal access to benefits from contracting land and women's rights to contracting and operating land should be guaranteed. Regarding education, the illiteracy rate of females aged over 15 dropped from 90 percent before 1949 to 7.3 in 2017. But challenges remain, including standardization of practices in such a vast, imbalanced country. Moreover, in politics, while the number of women are increasing, the higher the political rank, the fewer the number of women. How can China progress in protecting women's rights and promoting gender equality? How to narrow the gap between governmental design and grassroots reality? That's the question for Closer to China.